Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome all everyone. Now it's actually been a year since I did a review on this uh, Makita M9204 random orbit sander. And I have said, uh, I think on some of my other videos that I will do a follow up of, on some of the tool reviews, especially where I did a review when they were brand new, just to sort of like give an idea of my impressions over time. Now recently I've had two or three posts actually on the original video of this where people have asked how I'm getting on with it. The first thing I will say is if you if you are interested in one of these then please do go off and see that other video where hopefully there will be links appear in the corner of the screen regularly throughout this video. There will certainly be links at the end and also below in the description. So please, please do go along and see that video. In that last video, I did go through several tests as in, especially sort of like the noise volume, uh, how it worked on a wood compared to an ordinary flat sander, and really how well the bag and that was picking up all the dust. Now I've got to say, I don't use this sort of on a really regular basis, uh, not even on a weekly basis. But when it does get used, it could be used for a few hours at a time. Now I have actually used this on a varying range of projects. Uh, just more recently, I've done a video where I made a clock for my office and I sanded off all the front there several times with just using this. And it worked really, really well. The main thing I've tended to use this for a lot of the time is when I've done pallet wood projects. And throughout probably the last year in my garden, I've made really four chairs i've made four tables uh, just recently i've also made like a sun lounger when i tend to do my pallet wood projects i will usually have pallet wood like this in lengths like that which i will then put through my planer thickener and it does still leave the, the little ridge lines on it it's not the best finish that i could get on the wood and i think partly of that is because of the softness of the wood and Especially with those pallet wood projects of the furniture, often not, I will then use my oldie palm router to put a round over edge on the sides, on the tops, and I will then use this to sand over all six sides to make sure that they're actually nice and smooth. And that's probably the biggest where this gets used. So at times, I mean, especially like with the chairs and everything, it's gone through quite a few pieces of wood to actually sand them all up. One of the things I did bring up on the original review was where several people had commented about this not really collecting the dust very much on the dust bag. And the first thing you've got to remember, this is a sander. It's a machine there to, to basically pull off lots and lots of dust from your wood. Now, if you're working in an environment, especially like your kitchen, where it's hopefully spotless, this is going to throw out some form of dust. It can't collect all the dust. But I've got to say, what it does do, it does a really, really good job. And in that last video, I did give a demonstration of when this was switched on, of how much it blows out this bag. So there is a really good vacuum process running through this. But obviously, most of that dust is all collected through these holes on, on here. So anything that's sanded on the outside here, where the dust is coming out the sides, is highly unlikely to be picked up. And this, I haven't actually emptied um, for a little while now. And hopefully you can see in there that there is an awful lot of really, really fine dust in there. And that's really more the essential dust that you want to be collected. Now you certainly don't want that sort of dust flying around in the air if you can really help it. Because wood dust these days is classed as a hazardous material. So hopefully you can see there, it really is still collecting the dust well. Performance-wise, to me, this hasn't changed from day one. Now, one of the first things I ever used this on was I had to replace a door in the house uh, with some doors that we got given, and I needed to sand off all this sort of like paintwork that was on the door as much as possible. And I made the mistake properly of using, trying to use this for all of the door. Where you've got a door with the panels which recess in, I was making the mistake of using this where it was then butting up against the edges. And that has actually caused a little bit of damage. What I've got here is a little bit on the edge here and other odd little pieces on the edge where it's actually worn away part of the, the hook and loop pad. Fortunately though, it actually hasn't caused any issues. As you see with how well that hooks on there of, of when I pull off these pads, 
it still goes on really really well now i think part of that could also be down to the way you actually look after the thing as well i always make sure that there is a pad left on here when i'm not using it so therefore while this sits in my shed i'm not getting loads and loads of dust go up onto this hook and loop pad so that's probably one important thing you always want to do it doesn't matter whether it's a really even old piece of sandpaper just keep something on there so that it protects that pad now one of the questions somebody has asked can you get spares for these i did a little bit of searching on the internet yesterday before i left off work and had a quick look and all i did is i googled makita spares and for me in the uk i just put a uk on the end as well and it came up with several websites now what i found on a lot of the, several of these websites was straight away when you did eventually find this tool uh, which i was quite surprised about because it's not their professional range they all had it i think there was only one website that, where i did go on there for spares that i couldn't find it but the ones that, I, that had actually got on there there was an exploded diagram of the whole piece as if you dismantled it and show you every single part so you could quite easily identify the part that you wanted now just to give an example if i was to replace this entire pad on the bottom here the very very first website i went on it was being sold for 35 pounds and you might think oh that's not a bad price but when you think the whole unit only cost me 45 pounds and screw fix are still selling these for 45 pounds now probably there's going to be a delivery charge on there as well even if it was as little as five pounds that's 40 pounds just for that pad you need to do a little bit of searching when you do look for these spares because when i actually went into the second website which i found this on i found the same identical exploder drawing but the part for that pad then was 25 pounds and again they might offer free delivery or there might be a five pound delivery charge it might even be more so you have to work out whether it's economical for the actual part now you might even find that over time that it's something that you have this for more than a year so it gets out the warranty it might be two or three years down the line but you might want something as simple as the switch now a switch might be as little as a few pounds and even with delivery works out far more economical to get that part and replace it than buying another brand new unit i've got to say for makita tools there are all the spare parts out there you just have to look and search and compare all the websites just to see if they are economical to buy the parts to repair your unit when i was did the original video i did point out the specs this was i think just over a kilo in weight might have been something like 1.2 1.4 kilo something like that so it is still nice and handy to hold fixed speed of 12,000 rpm now that 12,000 rpm doesn't mean that this piece of paper is spinning around at 12,000 rpm it's the actual motor spinning around at 12,000 rpm the actual rotation of this disc is going in a very strange sort of pattern so that you don't get a swirling round uh, markings on your wood so therefore even though it's 12,000 rpm you're not actually sanding the piece of work at 12,000 rpm if you did that you would basically scorch your wood so having that high speed of 12,000 rpm isn't such an issue so having something with a variable speed i don't think would really be of any benefit um because i mean if you could lower that down to probably a fraction of the speed i think some of them the others i looked at were would start off at about 4,000 rpm i think it would just be too gentle so hopefully that's really sort of just helped people who are interested in this just to see what my thoughts are on it a year later after using it now i've got to say that i would still thoroughly recommend this product uh, now it might not be for everybody they might want something bigger they might want the variable speed if you're after something light um, that really you want on flat surfaces then i would highly recommend this product even with a one-year warranty it's very very well built it feels solid even though it's probably lighter than all the other options i'm pleased the way the dust collection works uh, it works to me very very well it doesn't stick dust everywhere that i've found so it is working really really well and for 45 pounds to buy any really uh, mechanical piece of equipment it's still got to be cheap now if you were looking at 100 pounds it might be a total different thing but to me 45 pounds for a piece of kit like this really is a bargain 
Thanks a lot for watching.